Hello and welcome to this demo. My name is Mumshad Manambath and in this video we will get introduced to JSON path. We will start with a quick recap of YAML and the differences between YAML and JSON. We will then look at JSON path where we see how we can get started with querying a JSON dataset that consists of dictionaries, lists, lists and dictionaries and complex data structure and how to apply a criteria to our query. And finally, we will look at how to access the practice exercises associated with this video and how to navigate through the test. Note that this is for the absolute beginners, so we're going to go slow and start with really simple examples and use cases. And you will then get to practice what you learned and test your skills. So let's get started. And before we begin, remember to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with new videos like this. In one of the earlier videos, we got introduced to the basics of YAML. We saw how YAML was used to represent data in a structured format. You gather information about an object, in this case a car, convert it into data and store it in a YAML format, which is a format that can be easily read by humans and one that can be easily parsed through by machines or programs or code. So what's the difference between YAML and JSON? Well, they're one and the same thing. You can represent the same data in almost the same way in either of these formats. While YAML uses indentation to organize data into lists and dictionaries, JSON uses braces or curly brackets. A set of properties defined with the same indentation in YAML form a dictionary, whereas it is everything within a pair of curly brackets in JSON. While in YAML we use a dash to denote an item in a list, in JSON we use square brackets to define a list and each item within the list is separated by a comma. You can easily convert data in YAML to JSON and JSON to YAML using an online converter or a simple program. The website json to yamlcom helps you to easily convert a JSON data into a YAML format or vice versa. All programming languages have support for reading and writing in either of JSON or YAML format. For the remainder of this video, we're going to work with data in JSON format. Now, that doesn't mean that this is not applicable to YAML. As we just saw, data in YAML can be easily converted to a JSON format with a converter. So let's get into the topic of today's discussion, JSON path. JSON path is a query language that can help you parse data represented in a JSON or YAML format. Just like query languages in popular database softwares like SQL. For example, if you're given a table of data, you could run a query against it to one extract only certain fields like color and price of cars, to extract certain rows from it, like all information about a blue car, or three extract certain fields of certain rows like the price of a blue colored car. So for any given data, you apply a query and you get a result, which is a subset of that data. Similarly, in the JSON world, JSON path is a query language that when applied to a given JSON dataset gets you results that are subset of that data. For example, in this data that represents the color and price of a car, use the query car to get the color and price of it. Say for example, we have information about a bus as well. To retrieve details about the bus, use the query bus. What if you only want specific fields from within each of these? Say for example, the color of the car. Use the query car.color in that case. The dot notation in the query helps you select a particular field within a dictionary. Car is a dictionary and bus is another dictionary. To get the price of the bus, use the query bus.price. Let us suppose the car and bus are encapsulated within a dictionary named vehicles. 
Now, how would our queries need to change to get the same results as before? We now have a parent dictionary vehicles, then the car and bus, which are child dictionaries, and then color and price, which are properties of the car and bus. We would now say vehicles.car to get the car details, vehicles.bus to get the bus details, vehicles.car.color to get the car's color, and vehicles.bus.price to get the bus's price. So that's how the dot notation is used to extract properties of dictionaries and dictionaries of dictionaries in JSON data. However, there is something still missing. If you try to use these queries now, it won't work. Let's go back to our previous data, the one without the vehicles in it. Our JSON document has car and bus in it. As you can see, they are encapsulated within a pair of curly brackets. And as we said before, anything within the pair of curly brackets is a dictionary. So car and bus are two properties of a dictionary or two dictionaries within a dictionary. But what dictionary? What is the dictionary's name? The top level dictionary, which has no name, is known as the root element of a JSON document. The root element is denoted by a dollar. We had vehicles earlier, but we don't have anything now. So we will remove vehicles from our query and use dollar to denote the root element. And that's the right way to form a JSON path query. A query created for a JSON document with a dictionary at its root should start with a dollar like this, dollar.car, dollar.bus, dollar.car.color, dollar.bus.price, etc. Going back to the data with vehicles in it, vehicles is now a dictionary within the root dictionary. The queries should now be dollar.vehicles.car, $.vehicles.bus, $.vehicles.car.color, and $.vehicles.bus.price. Great. But there is one more thing that I haven't mentioned. The results you see here on the right, well, that is what you would expect, but that is not exactly how you get it. All results of a JSON path query are encapsulated within an array. So when you run a query, that is what you get, the same result that you expect, but encapsulated within a pair of square brackets. So just remember that any output of the JSON path query is available to you within a pair of square brackets. Let us now look at lists or arrays. Here I have a list of different types of vehicles, like car, bus, truck, and bike. As you can see, there are no curly brackets, so there are no dictionaries. This is a simple list of names of different vehicles. The root element in this JSON document is an array, denoted by the square brackets. How do we get the first element in this list? To get a particular element from a list, use the square brackets in your query and specify the position of the item you want inside it. The indexes start at zero, so remember that the first element is at zero, the second one is at one, the third is at two, etc. And of course, always remember to start with the dollar symbol for the root element. So to get the first element in my list, I say dollar of zero. To get the fourth element, I would say dollar of three. If I want the first and the fourth element, I could do 0, 0,3 within the square brackets like this. Let us now look at dictionaries and lists. Here I have a data of a car, its properties, color, price, and wheels. Wheels is a list that has four items in it, each one being a dictionary. Say for instance, we have a goal to develop a query to retrieve the model of the second wheel of the car. As always, our query starts with a dollar symbol for the root element. The root element of the object is a dictionary denoted by the curly braces. So we know our query has to start with a dot following the dollar symbol. The dot is for the dictionary. 
Within the root dictionary, we have the car dictionary. So that's next in our query. Within the car, we have wheels. In the current state, the query would return an array of all the wheels. But that's not what we want. We just want the second wheel. So how do we get the second element in the array? We use the square brackets and specify the position of the item within the array. The second element is at position 1 as the index starts at 0. Note that we did not use the dot here as wheels is not a dictionary. It is an array. We now have the second wheel details. But that's still too much information for us. And that's not what we want. We just want the model of the second wheel. The detail we have is a dictionary and you can get its model by adding dot model to our query. Finally, let us look at applying some basic criteria or conditions to our query. So why do you need criteria or conditions on the first place? Here I have a set of data, which is basically a bunch of numbers. What if we want to query numbers based on certain criteria, such as list all numbers greater than 40? How do we do that? Well, we start with the dollar symbol for root element. And since the root element is an array, we use square brackets. Within the square brackets, earlier we were able to just give the position of items in the list. But in this case, there could be thousands of numbers in the list. We want to define a criteria where we say, get me numbers that are greater than 40. So check if each item in the array is greater than 40. And if it is, return that number to me. And that has to go within these square brackets. Now, of course, it's not going to be this verbal. So the check if part can be replaced by a question mark followed by a pair of brackets. This is used to specify a criteria or filter. Within the brackets, we say check whether each item in the list is greater than 40. From this, the phrase each item in the list can be replaced by the at symbol. The at symbol in a criteria means each item in the list. So our query is finally dollar followed by the square brackets. Within the square brackets, we use the question mark to specify a criteria. The criteria is always defined within the curved brackets. And in this case, the criteria is at greater than 40, meaning items greater than 40. Similarly, you can use other operators like at equals 40, at not equals 40, or at in a set of numbers like 40, 43, or 45. So that would return all the numbers that are either 40 or 43 or 45, and at not in a set of numbers. So that would return all those numbers that are not 40, 43, or 45. So those are a few operators of the many available with JSON path. So going back to this example where we have a car with four wheels, you're now asked to find out the model of the rear right wheel of the car. Now, looking at this data, you could simply find the model of the third wheel because by looking at it, you know the rare right is the third item in the list. So you write a query to pull the model of the third wheel. But this may not be true all the time. Maybe for the next car, the person who was responsible for entering this information into the database followed a different order. The rare right wheel is now the second in the list. So our query now returns the model of the front left wheel, which is not desired. So our query no longer works for us. For our query to work with data entered in any order, we can use a criteria to identify the wheel which has the location property set to rear right. So instead of hard coding the position of the wheel, we replace it with a criteria. We first add the question mark with brackets to specify a criteria and then inside that we say check if each item has the location property equal to rare right. 
And there we have our criteria. Well, that's a quick introduction to JSON path. Head over to the practice exercises section and try to practice what you learned. For this, head over to the URL codecloud.com slash p slash json dash path dash quiz. It will open up a quiz portal interface. On the left top side, you have your questions. Below that, you have the space to type in your answers. In the lower half, you have two sections. The one on the left is your source data, and the one on the right is the expected output. Your goal is to create a JSON path query that when applied to the source data gets you the expected output. You can start typing in your answer in the space provided. As you type it in, your query is automatically applied to the source data, and the result can be seen in the section in the top right corner of the screen. This will help you compare the output of your query to the expected output. As soon as you develop a query that gets the expected output, the question is marked as complete successfully, and you can move on to the next question by clicking on the Next Question button. You can try different queries as many times as you want until you get the right answer. You will be able to see the result of the query instantaneously in the section in the top right corner. In case you're not able to figure it out, click on the Show Solution button and it will show you the right answer. Well, good luck with the practice test. If you're interested, watch me solve the test in my next video. For more information about JSON Path, check out github.com slash JSON Path for a full documentation. If you'd like more advanced use cases to be covered, please leave a comment below and I will try to get it done. Well, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Goodbye.